Hello and welcome to jQuery for Designers. This is a screencast to demonstrate how to create the coder pop-up bubbles. The bubble bubble pop-ups that kind of puff into view and puff out of view. So let me just show you what I mean. Coder is the, the new one window web development tool uh, produced by Panic. Um, and on their page they've got these buttons and when you put your mouse over the download this nice little effect comes up, shows you how big the file is and just has some general information so it's, it's good for kind of information snippets of, uh, of text. And when I mouse away it kind of just fades out of view. So we're going to recreate this effect uh, using jQuery. Here's my my sample setup. I've got some HTML set up as well. I've used their images just to kind of just to show you how it, how it would work. You your information block can be anything. In this example, the Panic uh, developers have used a table, so I've I've literally just taken it and plugged it into my code. So this is what it looks like at the moment. There's no JavaScript in there, so nothing happens. So this is what it should look like when no JavaScript's on there, and this would actually be a link, and I could download the product. The table that I've taken from from the Coda website looks like this. And we've got a class of pop-up. I've wrapped the whole thing in this uh, this div bubble info. So we've got our image, a class of trigger, and we've got our table with class of pop-up. Can be anything of your div, can be a span, whatever you want. Um, and up here is our style sheet. Now, pretty much everything from here downward is specific to the the Coda website to just make it look right and make it kind of have the um uh the bubble of bubble visual effect so your code won't may not have that or it may have that or, or whatever this is the the important code to create the effect so we need position relative on the bubble info the thing that wraps both our table and our image so this class here has got position relative and <clears throat> the trigger doesn't actually need position relative, so let's get rid of. Uh, no, I've used position. Sorry, uh, yeah, I don't need that. The pop-up has got position absolute because we're going to position the pop-up relative to this image here, rather than relative to the page. We know that this point here, where we want it to appear, will be you know, x pixels to the left and, and x pixels to the top. We've got a high z index, so it appears over everything. So, if we actually move this image a little bit higher up, we we would want the pop-up to appear above this this bubble or whatever other elements you'd have on there. To start off with, we've got display none and op opacity to zero. But we, the minimum you want is display none because you don't want it to actually appear if um, the JavaScript's disabled. The opacity and uh, yeah, the opacity and display settings will reset every time we go to make the pop-up appear. So let's crack on with our JavaScript. So let's import jQuery. I don't think that's passed. So this is our when our DOM is ready. And I'm going to do dot bubble info dot each, which sets me up for a plugin later on because then I can just, if I wanted, in my plugin I just do return this dot each. Um, but you'll be able to find tutorials on that on the internet and elsewhere. Right, to create my effect I need a few things to track what's going on. Um, so the variables in this are the distance is going to move. So I'm going to move it 10 pixels. The time it takes to create the effect, so a quarter of a second. So that's, that's one quarter of a second. And the time between it showing and me moving my mouse away and the whole bubble just disappearing. So I'm going to make this half a second. I need a high delay timer, which I'll explain later on.
and I'm going to capture the trigger element. I'm using this as a context, so the second variable passed into the dollar function tells us to look for dot, an element with a class trigger within the context of this, and this is our bubble info. So we're saying within this block here, find the element that has a trigger class, which is our image. And pop up, <coughs> same thing, this. And if we wanted, we could set our opacity here if we wanted to have that SDSS, but we're not going to. Right, <coughs> we need our we need a mouse over effect, uh, mouse over event, and we're going to have a mouse out. Oh, sorry, mouse out event, and we need to hook these to both the trigger and the pop up. And the right syntax for that isn't comma separated like I've done there. I need to put it in an array and get the actual element. So get since they're they're completely separate elements. I mean, I could do the first children of bubble, bubble info, but I need to, I just want to specify those elements that I'm interested in. I'm sure there's different ways of doing this, and syntax for this could be like that. Um, but that's how I'm doing it for this one. Right, so mouse over. Out. I'm just going to do a console.log to make sure I've got the mouse over event. Yeah. Okay, that's fine. So we've got a scroll bar here. Why have we got that? Strange. There's a width. Oh, it's because a. Uh, isn't it position relative or something? Yeah. Uh, I'm just going to set a width on that to get rid of my scroll bar. Right. Okay, so back to our mouse over event. <clears throat> what we're going to try and achieve here is a pop up. We're going to change its CSS. Remember, it's got an opacity of zero and it's display none. So we're going to change it to. We're going to leave the opacity at zero. I'm going to put, add in display block. We need to position it. Um, <clears throat> for the moment, I'm just going to put top minus 100 and left 40. So when my mouse goes over, it should actually appear. The pop-up will appear, and it'll appear in a certain position. So that didn't work uh, because our opacity is still off. I'm just adding the opacity just for a uh, to see where where it's appearing. Right. So the left is is too far over to the left for for what I want to do. So I'm just going to bring the left over. Take note. Minus 32 pixels. Okay. 32. Cool. So that's where I want my pop up to appear. I'm going to get rid of the opacity because we're going to use animate to get the opacity to, to move. So opacity 1. So there's our fade up effect. But you'll remember in the, the actual coder website, what's happening is it's kind of fading upwards, and then as our mouse goes away, it fades upwards again to create this kind of puff effect. So we want that as well. So I'm going to move it um, top minus equal. So we're going to move it negatively uh, along its what, y axis. So it's going to move upwards. And I'm going to use this distance. So if you see, because I keep when I put my mouse back over again, it resets its position. So when we mouse out, it'll puff up more. Um, 
And when we mouse back in again, we don't want it to kind of keep going higher and higher and higher as it is there. Um, but that's because the <laughs> the jQuery is not finished. Right. So going back, what we want to what you're seeing there is the effect keeps getting cooled. So I need to say if if the effect is being shown then return else we want the code to run and we just say being shown equals true and let's create this local variable so now what I'm saying what I say is if it's being shown don't bother cr like reanimating it and for the first time that we animate it set being shown to true and start animating it so you see as I keep putting my mouse over nothing more happens but <clears throat> when we hide it we we do want to reset uh, this being shown flag so on mouse out being shown equals false you can see it oh. right sorry uh, let me finish uh, the, the the code before I get too excited um, when the animation is finished I need to call a function set being shown to false because it's no longer being shown but it is Visible, so it's it's visible. True, and I'm going to say if it's already visible, don't bother trying to set the, don't try and bother doing the effect. So we said it's no longer being shown, but it is visible. So, and in this code, we we say if it's visible, then we return don't do the effect. And on mouse out, we want to do the opposite. So we'll do um, pop up dot animate <coughs> top, and we're, because we're going to puff it up and then puff it away upwards, we're still doing the minus equals, and opacity goes down to zero. I want to say visible equals tr is equal to false because it's no longer visible. So let's have a look at that. Put a mouse in, stays there, mouse out, goes away. So that's the effect, except we've got this problem here. Put my mouse in, put it over, it goes away. That's our bug. To get around this, we're going to use this high delay timer and I say if high delay timer clear the timeout and I'm going to do high delay timer equals set timeout We've got a time on there Hide delay, yeah. Hide delay. So here we've said if our mouse goes out, fire this function, the animation, after half a second. Which is fine, but it doesn't fix our problem yet. So my mouse, if my mouse goes out and comes back, uh, it shouldn't be. Put the high delay up to a second. It what we need to do is clear the uh, cancel the the this request to hide the hide the actual pop up. And we do that in the mouse over. So we copy this clear timer. 
whenever we mouse over, we always clear our timer. So if I refresh, now I can mouse over this uh, info block and it doesn't go away. Take the mouse away, and after half a, was it half a second or a second, it goes away. One. There you go. Let's bring that down to half a second. So my mouse can travel around this, these two areas without any problem. It can come out of the, uh, the block briefly, but if I come out entirely, it floats away. So I've, I've skimmed through that code very quickly. There's, uh, there's, the code is on the website, uh, jgroofordesigners.com, with comments throughout it to explain where, uh, why we're using these trackers. Um, but the, the most important part is this block in the... Uh, in the mouse over because we need to make sure that the effect of clearing the pop-up doesn't fire even though we're moving from the trigger to the pop-up. Okay, I um, hope you've enjoyed this uh, screencast, as brief as, and quick as it might have been. Um, if you've got any feedback, just drop us a comment on the, uh, the blog post. Alright, thanks a lot.